Hello and welcome to Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning and I'm in Fremont, California, straddling the Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault is a major earthquake generating fault in the San Francisco Bay Area. More than two and a half million people live in high risk areas around and on top of the fault. And more people live around this single fault than any other in the United States, which makes it probably the most dangerous in the country. But there is much more to the Hayward Fault than meets the eye. Here in Central Park in Fremont, California, we can very easily see a very important feature of the Hayward Fault. This fault moves continuously all the time. This is called aseismic creep, and this is the process by which the fault is continuously moving over time. The west side of the Hayward Fault is moving northward at about five millimeters a year relative to the eastern side of the fault, where my right foot is currently planted. If I were standing here long enough, say 50 years, I'd eventually have a considerable distance between my two legs. I'm currently standing on the patio of the Fremont Community Center, and over the 50 years or so since this building was built, the patio and parts of the inside of the building itself have been noticeably shifted and broken. There are big cracks running through the foundation of the building and through this patio that I'm standing on, as well as cracks in the curbs and parking lots around the park. So in this corner of the patio, we can really clearly see this slow, gentle creep. Features like this are really exciting to me as a seismologist because they display uh, on a human time scale the actual movement of the crust in plate tectonics. This piece of wood here is actually bent and very slightly buckled right here at the corner, whereas the concrete is fractured. The wood is soft enough that it can bend, but the concrete cannot. And these big tiles are actually being moved apart in such a way that the pieces of wood just get replaced with more concrete. This whole patio is actually moving away from the building itself, which is why we have this big gap and the buckling paint and plaster behind me. This whole patio surface is a little bit wonky, and as you look down it, you can actually see the way it's warped by the movement of the Hayward Fault. So even though the Hayward Fault is continuously creeping, it is still building up tension at depth and can create massive large earthquakes. And that's very important for the infrastructure of the area. The local Bay Area Rapid Transit, or BART system, crosses the Hayward Fault in numerous places, including twice in a recent extension that actually goes in a tunnel underneath Central Park. Other major utilities, including highways, streets, and the major Hetch Hetchy Aqueduct also cross the fault in numerous locations, which makes the Hayward Fault considerably threatening to the region's infrastructure. The Hayward Fault's last major earthquake was on October 21st of 1868, and it caused so much damage through the Bay Area that it was called the Great San Francisco Earthquake until the more famous San Andreas Fault ruptured in 1906, which created even more disastrous conditions throughout the Bay Area. Through paleoseismology, we are able to peer deeper into the history of this fault, and we can see that these major earthquakes happen about every 140 years. As it stands right now, it's been 123 years since the last major earthquake on this fault, so that's a very good reason to be prepared at all times if you live in earthquake country. As part of the complicated system of faults that forms California, the Hayward Fault has interesting relationships to many of the other major faults in the area. Following the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, which occurred near the San Andreas Fault, the Hayward Fault actually stopped creeping for a period of several years. And this exemplifies the complicated relationships of strain and stress that necessarily exist in such a complex system of faults. Now, even though the Hayward Fault presents a very real threat of earthquake hazard and disaster to the region, it also presents wonderful examples of earthquake features and active tectonics. Here on the patio, we can see numerous areas in which large tiles are fractured, cracked, and places are moving apart from each other at different rates. But we can also see things such as folding. There's actually several large knolls that cross this park at funny angles, and these reflect bends in the Hayward Fault. These are called pressure ridges, and when the Hayward Fault has a slight step to the left, this actually causes some folding. So if we were to slice these ridges down the middle, we would see ground getting folded upward. Just north of Central Park, there's an area called a sag pond, where there's a step in the other direction in which causes actual tension and sagging of the ground, and this is called a sag pond. 
Pressure ridges and sag ponds are two important features of strike slip faults, of which the Hayward Fault is one. The western side of the Hayward Fault is moving north. If I step to this side of the fault, then the community center building is actually moving to the right. And its motion to the right is why we call it a right lateral fault. The other side is moving to the right compared to where I'm standing. The creeping motion of this fault can be seen in warping both of the landscape and pressure ridges, and also of asphalt in parking lots and curbs along the sides of driveways. In many places, asphalt in parking lots is warped so much that things like arrows and parking spot indicators are noticeably deformed. Through Central Park, there's a thing called the Earthquake Walk, in which interpretive signs actually outline and point out different important features of understanding the active fault motion in this area. The Hayward Fault is very interesting, and these features of constant fault movement are visible throughout the East Bay region. So here, just a short distance south of Central Park, is a historic winery. And this historic winery actually exploits a feature of the Hayward Fault. Behind me, you can see a relatively tall cliff, and it is actually truncated by the Hayward Fault. The fault cuts across a low hill behind me, and it took the toe of that hill somewhere to the north, and it left behind this rather steep ridge. So the winery is actually built into this low cliff behind me, uh, and it's the location that had many vats in which wine was being made over a hundred years ago. And this is just one of the many ways that faults continue to shape our built environment. But that's not the only reason I'm here. I'm also here because behind this fence is one of the four creep meters installed along the Hayward Fault. Now, a creep meter is just a device that measures the creep along the fault. Inside it, there are two rods. One is made of a metal alloy, and the other is made of silica, or quartz. So as the Hayward Fault slowly moves over time, these two rods are actually physically bent. And every few years they're removed and highly precise measurements are taken, but we can also measure through changes in electrical current how exactly they are bent over time. And this gives us highly precise measurements of the creep rate on the Hayward Fault over time. This is a very educational space to walk around and visualize the processes of active plate tectonics. This has been Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning. Thank you very much for watching.